Hi, my name is David Tangredi, and this is my video blog for March 26, 2012. What you see in this video is the scene from last night. In Austin, the weather was warm and the skies were clear. And I had the opportunity to sit outside and just stare at this beautiful configuration in the sky. Now, what this image shows is, of course, the crescent moon, which is waxing. You see Jupiter to the left, and you see Venus up above it. Now, last night, I was also able to see the Pleiades, which were just above Venus. So what you have here in astrological terms is a moon-Jupiter conjunction. Just before the hours of when I got to see it, the moon passed closest to Jupiter from our perspective, um, and astrologically speaking. So this scene inspired the idea to create a video blog and share with you images of the past month because obviously through weather, even weather here in Austin and in other places, there were days that we couldn't partake of the beauty. So let's jump back to February 25th. If you look at this image, it actually looks similar to what we were seeing, except this time the moon is nearly conjunct Venus. Venus is the lower star, and Jupiter is the higher star. And this was about, obviously, a month ago, so the moon was in nearly the same phase that it is now. So this was as we were approaching the Venus-Jupiter conjunction. So I'm going to advance it. Now let's look at what the 26th was like. And you can see the moon jumped up, and now it was conjunct nearly Jupiter. So this is a month ago today. One more day forward, and you see the moon is now going away from the two. So now let's jump to March 10th. Because this is when Venus and Jupiter started to get really close. Venus is on the right, Jupiter is on the left. It appears as we advance, so now we'll go to the 12th, and you see it appears that Venus is moving up the way I've drawn it. Now in the sky they talk about Jupiter moving down, but it's all relative. So on the 13th, Venus passes closest to Jupiter from our perspective. And then by the 14th, it start, it's starting to move out of the conjunction. By the 19th, the separation gets wider. And then by the 24th, that's when the moon was first visible to me and close to the other two. And you can see how they started to separate in the sky. Then we go back to the 25th, which was yesterday, which is what I was sitting and staring at. And on the 26th, this is what we'll see tonight for those of us who have clear skies. Now I'd like to show this from a different perspective. Of course, during the day, when we look at the sun, uh, we don't get to see the planets. It doesn't mean that they're not visible. If we knew exactly where to look, you can actually see Venus in the middle of the day. I learned this one day when I was lying on the beach staring up at the sky and just happened to look right in Venus's direction and lo and behold I could see it. Um, that's when I realized for the first time that you can actually see Venus. Jupiter you would be really difficult to see during the day but Venus you can definitely see during the day. Okay so let's go back to the 25th except this time we're going to kind of zoom in and it's a somewhat unrealistic perspective because you would never be able to see Jupiter that size. You know, the proportions are all off, but this is for illustration purposes. So from here on Earth, as we're turning away from the sun, entering into our evening on the 25th, this is sort of what we're seeing. Jupiter is way in the distance on the other side of the sun, far, far, far from us, and Venus is... In its orbit around the sun, it is closer to the sun than we are, as it is an inner planet relative to us. And what it is doing, it is swinging around. 
It is actually on the far side of the sun from us, moving away from the sun. Now, Venus moves much faster than we do because it's closer to the sun. So watch what happens. On, this is on the view on the 25th. Now, by the 10th of March, Venus is moving up away, away from the sun, behind the sun. Jupiter appears to be moving closer to the sun, but what's really happening is Jupiter's moving very slowly relative to us. We're actually moving around the sun. And so Jupiter appears to be falling towards the sun because of our movement around the sun. So this was the 10th, and then when we get to the 12th, that's when we had what appeared to be the conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. Now, Venus and Jupiter are nowhere near each other at this point, but they appear to be right next to each other. And again, in this case, both Jupiter and Venus are on the opposite side of the sun from us, more or less. Jupiter completely, Venus is still working its way towards our side of the sun. So on the 13th, Venus, as they say in astrology, overtakes Jupiter on the 14th, it appears higher in the sky from us. It appears to be further away from the sun, but it's actually just swinging out away from the sun in its own orbit. Now we're going to jump to the 25th. This was yesterday. Venus appears to be much further from the sun than Jupiter, which is obviously an illusion. Now, sometime between the 25th of March and the 25th of April... Venus is going to reach its widest swing from our perspective in this time period. So in other words, Venus is moving from behind the sun, swinging in its orbit, out to the side, and then it's going to come closer to us and move in between the Earth and the sun. So when we jump to the 25th of April, again, Jupiter is still falling behind the sun, and Venus appears to be furthest from the sun, or I don't think the 25th is actual the day it looks furthest, but it'll be roughly that. Then we jump to the 9th of May, and now they're both falling into the sun. By the 11th of May, Jupiter will fall behind the sun, and on the 12th of May, it'll be pretty much out of view. Now we probably won't even be able to see it for the few days before that because it's going to be so close to the sun that by the time the sun sets, Jupiter will be right on the horizon and then heading beyond it. But from the 12th for for a few days, Jupiter will appear to pass behind the sun because what we're doing is moving around the sun on our side. So now let's jump to the 26th of May and all you're going to see is Venus. But Venus is getting closer to the sun. Now this means Venus will set close to the sunset. The closer Venus gets to the sun on this sign, the closer it follows behind the sun setting. By the 29th, Venus will almost be out of our evening sky. But what's happening here is Mercury now is coming into view from behind the sun. So Mercury is going to make a similar loop around the sun from behind it to in front of us, to in front of it. Let's advance to June 2nd. Now Mercury appears to be further away from the sun than Venus. Venus is now on our side of the sun, heading towards a passage in between us. Now this is actually really special because on the 4th is pretty much the last day that Venus will be an evening star. Now we won't see it because it's going to be so close to the sun, I don't think we're going to be able to see, see it on that day, but it still sets behind the sun. So it's still technically, this is the last day that it's an evening star. On the 5th of June, we have a very interesting transit. Venus is now transiting in front of the sun from our perspective. It is literally going to cross the face of the sun because there's a perfect alignment on this day between the Earth, Venus, and the sun. That day is a, you know, astrologically speaking, Venus 
would be said to be conjunct the sun. This happens rarely. Um, I don't know how rarely. I was told recently, and I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's not something that we get to see much at all. So you can bet that there's going to be a lot of telescopes, um, well, not personal telescopes, of course, because you'd be looking directly into the sun, but special telescopes that can filter the sunlight is going to watch this event as Venus crosses in front of the face of the sun. Now, starting on June 6th, Venus is going to be a morning star. Uh, we probably won't be able to see it for a few days because it'll be too close to the sun. It'll rise just before the sun does in the morning. And each day it's going to rise a little bit earlier than the sun and it'll start to become more conspicuous. Now, the last image I'm going to show you back to that first format, which, what, which is what you'll actually see in the sky. This is June 17th looking to the east before the sun rises, maybe an hour, maybe an hour before the sun rises, you will see the moon conjunct Jupiter. This is the waning moon. And Jupiter is, high, is the one that's higher in the sky because it crossed behind the sun first. And so it kind of has a head start. It's further, further away from the sun on that side from our perspective. And then there Venus is going to join it. So Venus is going to actually move back up close to Jupiter after the 17th of June. It's not going to conjunct Jupiter again, but it will get close, closer than on the 17th. And then what will happen is it'll start heading back around the other way because Venus is an inner planet. It's looping around the sun. It never moves, from our perspective, it never moves that far from the sun. But as we swing around, we'll eventually pass in between the sun and Jupiter. And much later, uh, either this, much later in the year, will be between the Sun and Jupiter, and so Jupiter will be way away from the sunrise sunset. It'll be high in the sky in the middle of the night. So that's it for our audio blog for the 26th of March. Happy stargazing. Tonight is, is a really good day to get out there if the weather is good in your area, and, uh, but you can just kind of keep an eye on Venus and Jupiter as they separate and then look for them again in June in the morning. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. Take care.